This video is on cropping and masking spatial data in R. Spatial data is often larger than we need it to be for our particular project. For example, raster data is typically uh, comes in large rectangular blocks of data, and we're often only interested in the part of that data that occurs within our study region. To get the piece of spatial data that we want for making maps or doing analysis, we do something called cropping. And we'll look at this using the data from Harvard Forest we've been working with so far. And we'll start with our key uh, libraries already loaded. So that's SF, STARS, and ggplot. And then we'll load the data for the Harvard boundary, our site boundary, which we'll call Harv boundary. And <clears throat> we'll read in using st read, and that's in data slash harv slash harv underscore boundary dot shp. And we'll also load that DTM we've been working with, which covers the entire site. And we'll call that harv DTM and assign it the value from read stars data slash harv slash harv underscore DTM full so that we get the big digital terrain model dot shape. Oh, not dot shape. Dot tiff because this is raster data not vector data. And let's go ahead and plot this data. Do ggplot geome stars, where the data is equal to harv underscore dtm, plus we'll go ahead and scale it, uh, the fill using veridis scale fill veridis underscore c and then we'll add that vector data on top with geome sf data is equal to harv underscore boundary and we'll set alpha is equal to zero so this is a graph that we've made a few times now and let's go ahead and run that and so this is a common situation to be in. Here's our site boundary. This is what we are, we actually care about what the raster values are. And then here's the rest of the raster, which stretches out beyond the site. There are two general approaches to cropping data down to smaller portions that we actually want. The first and probably most common is to crop raster data to only keep the portion that falls inside of some vector data, some polygon data, uh, like our site boundary here. And we can do this using the stcrop function, st underscore crop. And the first argument to this function is the raster that we want to crop. The second argument is the vector that we want to crop it to. And so let's go ahead uh, and do this and we'll call the output harv dtm cropped. And we'll use the stcrop function, st underscore crop. We want the vector that we want to crop first, so that's harv underscore dtm, and then the vector that we want to crop to, harv underscore boundary. And if we look at harv dtm and harv dtm cropped, we can see that this cropping has actually occurred. So harv dtm, if we look at it, uh, has x and y values ranging from 1 to 150, so it's a 150 by 150 square. If we look at harv dtm cropped, 
by typing its name and running it, we can see that it covers a smaller area. So it's ranging from 9 to 127 on the X and 2 to 146 on the Y. And so it's been cropped, it's been made smaller uh, in response to this cropping. So let's go ahead and plot this now and see what things look like. I'm actually just going to copy our code from above here because all we need to do is change the data source. And so now, instead of plotting Harv DTM, let's plot Harv DTM cropped. And what we'll see is that now we only see the colored raster values for areas inside of our polygon. So that's great. Uh, but we still see this sort of gray box region around the outside. Now that gray box region is smaller. It's been shrunk in uh, to the very outer limits of X and Y, but there's still all of these gray cells. And those cells uh, are null values, and they're used to fill the space outside of the vector object, but within its x and y extent. And that's because vectors are always stored as rectangles. And so we can't have a rectangle, we can't have a raster that doesn't have information that's within the rectangle that perfectly surrounds our vector object. However, we often don't want to show those null values even if we need to keep them uh, because of how rasters are structured. And we can do that uh, by changing, by adding an optional argument to our scale fill command, whether it's Veritas or something else. And we can do that by setting the null value color to transparent. And we do that by uh, the optional argument na.value, and we set that equal to transparent. And now if we run this again, we won't see uh, any of those null values displayed. They'll be hidden uh, so that we can just look at the uh, data that we want, uh, the data inside that polygon. As we just talked about, cropping removes the portions of the raster that are outside of the XY extent of the vector data that we're cropping to. In some cases, we want to keep the full dimensions of the raster, of the original raster, but convert all of the values outside of the vector to NA. And this is called masking data as opposed to cropping data. And we can do this in the same way uh, that we've done things so far, but by adding an optional argument to our crop command. And so if we wanted to make this masked instead of cropped, we would add crop is equal to false uh, to our cropping command, and that would keep the full extent of the raster while uh, still converting everything outside of our polygon boundary to NA. So that's how we crop uh, data from a raster into a polygon. The other major approach to cropping is to crop out a specific region of the object inside of a box. So cropping to a bounding box. And so, for example, we might want to explore just a particular area inside of Harvard Forest uh, that we don't have uh, some sort of polygon data to cut out or crop to just that piece. We still do this using the stcrop function, but instead of passing it a polygon layer to crop to, we pass it uh, a square region instead of a polygon. And to do that, we need to know which part 
of this region we want in the coordinates that our data is actually stored in. And as we learned last time, while we're seeing latitude and longitude values on the axes, those aren't the actual units for our projection, which are in UTMs. And so to figure out where I want to crop things, I need to add cord underscore SF datum is equal to, and we'll just look it up again, uh, STCRS for the Harvard boundary. And so now we're back in the units that our data is stored in, and so we can use that to sort of look up some edges here and decide on an area to crop. We create a bounding box using the st underscore bbox function. And we describe that bounding box based on the largest value of x that we want to keep and the smallest value of x that we want to keep and the smallest value of y and the largest value of y. So basically we're describing the edges of the box. And we provide that information in a named vector. And we'll see what that looks like here. So let's store this in a variable called bbox for bounding box. We use the st bbox function. And this now takes two arguments. And the first is this named vector. So it's a vector. And we create that using the c function, like we've always done. But now we're going to give names to each of the values in the vector. And those names are x min, x max, y min, and y max for the different edges of the box. So let's do x min, and let's say uh, we want to crop something uh, kind of over in this region of Harvard Forest. And so we'll say x min is equal to 731000. These axes labels are a little squished here. Uh, but we can see that 731000, we're actually going to crop kind of right in here in the middle. Uh, and then y min is equal to 4 million, 7, well, I'll just 4713000. x max is equal to 732000. And y max is equal to 4714000. Then I'm going to go down to the next line here. And the other thing that bbox needs is the coordinate reference system that this data is in. So we'll say CRS is equal to ST underscore CRS. And we can pick either of these objects, uh, DTM. Okay, and so this says create a bounding box with these sides and this coordinate reference system. And I've got a typo here, it's actually harv dtm. And now we can pass that to stcrop. So we could say harv dtm small is the output from stcrop. stcrop always takes the raster that we want to crop from as the first argument. So that's harv underscore dtm. And then the thing that we want to crop it to, which in this case is our bounding box, as the second argument. And so bbox. And we can also do this kind of bounding box based cropping on vector data as well. And so uh, if we had loaded our soils data, I'm going to actually go back up here and load our soils data using, so into Harv soils, we'll load our data using st read, and that's data slash harv slash harv underscore soils dot shp. 
And so remember that's vector data, it's a bunch of polygons, and we can actually do the same thing with that data. So we can say harv soils small st crop and now because the thing that we want to crop is vector data we can put harv underscore underscore soils here and then our bounding box to crop to now with the sf package ST crop actually works a little differently. We can pass it a proper bounding box. We could have, if we wanted to, just passed it uh, this named vector instead, and it would have taken care of creating the bounding box automatically. Uh, but we'll keep it the same here because we, we already have a bounding box. And now let's go ahead and plot these two bounding box cropped layers together. So we'll say ggplot plus geome stars for our raster data and data is going to be equal to harv underscore dtm small we'll keep our scale underscore fill underscore veritas underscore c for our veritas color ramp and then we'll add our geome sf for our cropped vector data and say data is equal to harv underscore soils underscore small and we'll set alpha equal to 0 0.5 so that we can see the raster data underneath it's like i forgot to run this line looks like i forgot to run this line Looks like I had a typo when I ran this line. All right, so we're gonna crop the raster data, crop the vector data, and then plot them together. And now we can see uh, we've got this smaller cropped set of data for both our soils polygons and our uh, raster data and it can actually help us see cool features like the alignment of this whole soil type here uh, with this variation in elevation. So that's the basic idea behind how we crop spatial data to focus only on the regions that we're interested in. We use the strop function and we can use it in two ways. We can either use it to crop raster data to only fit within a polygon, or we can use it to crop both raster and vector data to fit within a bounding box. And the first argument to strcrop is always the thing that we want to crop, and the second argument is the region that we want to crop it to. Today I learned that reshoots, especially with fancy hair, are a nightmare. So you get a different kind of fancy hair because my stylist wasn't available. It's the problem with stylists who go to school online. Sometimes they're in class. So that's the basic idea behind cropping data 